I grew up in what people would consider a bad household. My mom and dad were in a bad relationship, and they did nothing but argue every day. My mom would complain that my dad would stick in the basement almost every day and never spend any time with me. And my dad would always have the same response, that he's doing research down there. The only problem was that we were prohibited from going down to the basement. Three locks were built into the basement door, and he kept his one key on his old key ring. The key had a torn blue sticker at the bottom of it with a brown rusty tip. However, my mom finally got a hold of it somehow. And that same day when I came home from school, Dad suddenly told me she left us for another man. He seemed truly broken and sunk in his misery. So I tried acting, I mean, pretending to be normal at first. But I couldn't stop crying like a baby when I finally got back in my room. After a few months of emotional breakdowns, my dad finally got over it. Furthermore, he started to visit the basement more consistently to the point where I would feel like I lived alone. I kept thinking my dad was working very hard since I saw him being very distraught after coming upstairs from the basement. I thought everything was fine until I started hearing noises at night. They weren't just regular noises. It was kind of someone's crying and scream of agony. But the most disturbing sound of all was the sound of growling, like some kind of beast would exist down in the basement. The next morning, I complained to my dad, but he acted like he had no idea what I was talking about as he walked past me to get ready for work. So I just shook it off, assuming that he was watching some horror movie down there, or if I was just imagining the whole thing. I went back to my room. As it was the weekend, I was ready to catch up on some Saturday morning cartoons. I turned on my TV, and as I got ready to change the channel, I heard a familiar name. The news reporter was naming over 40 missing people in our town, and my mom was one of those names as they briefly showed her picture and information. I was confused about who would file a missing person report for her, because my grandparents both died in a tragic car accident years ago. She had no siblings, and my dad told me she left us for another man. I wanted to inform my dad, but soon I was concerned it would make him depressed again. And in a way, I was still angry at her for leaving us. So I ignored it and changed the channel. A few minutes later, my dad came in to tell me he was leaving for work. He gave me a kiss on my forehead and informed me that he'd be back later that night. After he left... I invited my best friend Austin to come over. He then arrived shortly after and we played a game on my PlayStation. As we were about to plunge into the game, we suddenly heard a strange noise coming from the basement. What was that? Austin asked, being confused. I don't know. My dad does some kinds of experiments down there. It's probably a rat or something. Austin looked amused. No, dude, we can't go down there. My dad said so, I said quickly bringing an end to Austin's excitement. It has no reason to doubt that Austin was disappointed. Then he asked for something to drink, so I went to the kitchen to get some juice for him. However, I was hit with a foul odor of something rotting as soon as I arrived in the kitchen. I looked around to see what could be the cause of the smell, and I found that the basement door was cracked open. I went to close it, but the curiosity got the best of me. So I called Austin to help me investigate. We darted down the stairs to the basement, clenching our noses at that horrible smell. It was dark until Austin found a light switch and quickly flicked it on. However, we had to regret our decision instantly after we saw the inside of the basement. There were people hanging from hooks with random limbs missing. As we were standing in horror, Austin clenched my shirt strongly. I could see the piles of feces and human remains contained within certain sections of the room. But the most disturbing and disgusting sight of all was the cage in the dark right corner of the room. The inside of it seemed to be a person sleeping at first. But as it looked up, I quickly realized that thing was not a person. Wh what is that? Austin shouted, shaking with fear. I ignored his question. Uh, to be more specific... I couldn't answer. That thing was indescribably frightening. 
It looked like a deformed human with its mouth filled with crooked and ragged teeth covering a majority of its face. Its face pointed outward with creases where the nose should be. The eyes were bulging out of its head as it fixated its glance toward Austin and me. Food, it said to us slowly with excitement and a malicious voice. Then it started clawing at the iron bars of the cage with its needle-like hands. I sat there in horror until Austin grabbed my wrist. We ran up the stairs scrambling for the escape and shut the door. After I made sure it was perfectly locked, I saw Austin sitting on the carpet floor with his knees to his chest. Once we had a few moments of silence, I then finally realized what really happened to my mom and those missing people in our town. At that instant, Austin muttered like this, Your dad, he was feeding those people to that thing. Now, what should I do now? <laughs>